Uh, my name is Dana. My pronouns are she and they. I'm Sunny Miles, and my pronouns are he, they. And welcome to the Interest of the Week podcast. Number one, because like all 20-somethings going through quarter-life crisis, we've started a podcast. Quarter, quarter <laughs> life is a bit mean. I'm like barely 20. <laughs> I'm like getting into my mid-20s, but I'm not there yet. Oh, I'm just assuming I'm dying at 80. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, so this technically is the first, but we have recorded three, four different things. It's just taken a while for us to put stuff up here. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to get a feel for what we want, and this is the first one. We're like, oh, yeah, you know what? This, is, this feels right. We actually thought about this one before putting it up. It's- we we have put effort into researching things. And by that, I mean she took a course, and I looked up things up five minutes before we started recording. Just to be clear, I did not take the course just for the podcast. I took the course for my own knowledge and entertainment. No, no, no. Uh, she we took just it for the podcast. <laughs> we decided on the cor- we decided on the podcast like halfway through the semester. <laughs> okay, I guess. <laughs> okay, so this week is mythology, but specifically Greek mythology because that's what she took the course on. Yeah, and I know a fair bit about it. And I want to do this before I forget all of the knowledge that I learned before. Uh, So Interest of the Week is going to be a podcast where we talk about things that interest us the week. (laughs) In this podcast, we'll just kind of go over stuff that we like that you may not hear about on other podcasts. If you are listening to this now, feel free to reach out to us on the email. Yeah, interestoftheweek at gmail.com. And you can send us an email about what you want to hear us cover. We yeah. will most likely talk about it. Yeah. We like listening, looking up, like learning about other people's interests and stuff. Yeah. So with that in mind, let's get right into it. So Greek mythology. I've got it on my phone. Oh, you have it there. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, so, I'll open mine then. Yes. So Greek mythology and myths can be... It's hard to explain, but there are different kinds of myths. Um, There's social myths, which explain the society that the Greeks lived in. Trickster myths, which is all about the tricks of gods, heroes. So anything with Hermes in it? Basically. Um, Origin myths describe the beginning of things and how the world and universe came about. Anything with Kronos? Yes, creation myths are actually where Kronos is. Oh, what's origin um, So it's the beginning of the gods. Okay. Whereas or- origin myths are the origin of time. <gasps> oh, so like uh, Gia. She's also in the creation myths. Oh my god. What and she's myth? in origin myths, so it's... There's a lot yeah, of overlap. Yeah. Ritual myths explain religious practices. Um, there's I cannot actually pronounce this one. It's like eschatological myths or something like that i can't read i can't read i can't pronounce it yeah no there's no way i'm gonna be able to say that good luck reading it to my printing's horrible um those are kind of about the end of days and how everything's all going to end um they're sacred myths which explain the big questions of life um love death and immortality um they are sacred so not a whole lot of those can be found um I have certainly not heard one, to my knowledge. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stories like uh, Icarus or Hercules that like everyone knows, and then there's sacred runs that are like, maybe you heard one once in your life. Yeah, there's also the Ten Commandments of Ten Commandments of mythology. So it's not actual rules like the ones in the Bible. Um, so you basically you read Greek mythology with eyes of wonder. It's generally read in a present tone. It's read in first person plural most of the time. What's first person plural? For? Can you give me a sentence example. Um, it's speaking we. Oh, so uh, we like, went to the park one day. That's a lot of how it was spoken in first person plural when it was recited because um, you are the people mentioned in myths. You're not. It's not like, well, me and Apollo were hanging out. Um, it's 
Apollo did this to us as in humanity. Oh. So we're involved in the myths. I'm learning this on the spot, guys. <laughs> like I'm I'm reading my notes. <laughs> um I do take notes in class. Yeah, like a fucking nerd. <laughs> I am a fucking nerd. God damn it. <laughs> okay, continue. Um so good myths have powerful magnetism. You will know when you hear a good one. It, it's also like oh, so like when whole... you have a favorite myth, yeah, yeah, and that's like it's they like really reach story. out to you. Um, in myths, you also want to look for patterns. Oh, okay. Um, and so like any good storytelling, yes, watch okay. for patterns in the myths. A lot of myths have life lessons and stuff in them. They're also told many different ways. So one version of the story will say one thing, another will say something completely different. You just have to go with it. Just go with um, it, guys. Keep the myths sacred. So they are part of a religion that did exist and was less of a religion, actually more of a way of life. Yeah, so, um, like Hestia, like their flames, like they had to keep those going or they could like die. Like yeah. they people would kill them for letting that flame go out. Yeah, it was a way of life. This um, It wasn't always interpreted as fact, but they were a way of life. Um, so number seven is probably my favorite. What's number seven? God is everywhere. Isn't so that... in Greek mythology, myths are everywhere. There's a myth to explain pretty much everything. <gasps> oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, probably in the semester I heard like hundreds of stories and that didn't even grasp everything. Like it probably grasped maybe like a tenth, maybe. That's ridiculous. And a lot of myths have been lost to the ages, unfortunately. Well, yeah, a lot of myths were passed down uh, by oral tradition, wasn't it? Yeah. And so, so like, not all of them were written down. And if they were written down, no one's transcribed them yet, so. And some just got lost, mm -hmm. which is really sad. And I don't want to think about that. Uh, what did I write there? Oh, know, know your, your time. Know your tribe, actually. Oh, tribe. Yeah. I'm reading it from an angle. Yeah, so know your tribe. And my printing is chicken scratch. You can read it, though. That's uh, the important part. Expand your horizons. So it's just like the first one. Just keep an open mind about them. They, um, There's a few that I do find silly. And some of them are pretty silly. But to them, this was the big thing. Um. They're silly, but there are lessons to be learned from all of them. And the last one is read between the lines. Not everything in Greek mythology is taken at face value, uh, which I learned. <laughs> Every G give me an ex uh, like a quick example. Um, I'm trying to think of one. So when you see for like a pine cone, for example, it might not just be a pine cone. It might be a symbol. Oh, yeah, like um, if sort. you see a dolphin in the story, it's probably Aphrodite. I think the dolphins are part of it. No, I'm not dolphins, sure. Dolphins are Aphrodite. Eh. I know that for a fact. That's dolphins that's, that's a Mamma Mia fact. <laughs> Mamma Mia, Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia. <laughs> and Mamma Mia, the little, the little si si sigil on the ground where Aphrodite's fountain is, is this dolphin. And that's the whole point of the movie. There's a part of um, <laughs> Greek mythology where Apollo turns a bunch of like pirates into dolphins. So dolphins are tied with him as well. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, or if you see like an olive crown, it's probably a god. The lightning bolt is probably not a lightning bolt. If it, it's, it's Zeus. Zeus. Right? Yeah. So it's just stuff like that. Don't take anything at face value. And those are the ten commandments of myths. Yeah. So now we can move on to favorites. I'm gonna let you go first. With you the can let me go first. Yes. Is it because I don't have as much information and you want to flip through your pages? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll do fa favorite gods first, but my favorite, like, my most favorite god is Hestia. Like, she's uh, the hearth. She's not family because, you know, that's Hera, but, like, she is the, like, goddess of the home. Like, if you are going to have a place you call home, you would pray to her. Yes. Um, she is both the eldest and the youngest, which sounds a bit confusing. She was born first, but she was threw up second, last. <laughs> Incredible, Rather. yes. <laughs> uh, Zeus was thrown up last, obviously. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Zeus is the baby, but yet. But yet. <laughs> um, it just means that the youngest sibling is the most powerful. Uh, she was known for being kind and discreet. Um, 
and she made an oath to Zeus to never marry or fuck, which was like how the three virgin goddesses be. Yes, and there aren't a whole lot of myths involving her. She's very important, but yet there's not a whole lot of myth. Like, she was just the heart. She's just there. She's yeah. important. <laughs> she's, she's like, in the backdrop of every story, just judging everyone. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I'll go in with one favorite. Yeah, yeah, and you we'll, can go we'll, we'll go back and forth, because she has a few, and I have, like, five. Yeah. When I, I was, five yeah, when I was younger, my favorite god, well, goddess was Athena because of the owl and wisdom. Uh, so Athena is the goddess of wisdom and also warfare, but not like Ares. Ares is the god of like violent warfare. She's the god of strategic warfare. And the like the Trojan horse. Kind of, yes. She actually helped Odysseus come up with that idea. Oh, uh, okay. Athena is, I think she's, I still think she's cool. Um, she was one of the virgin gods as well, and has killed, she had killed people when they saw her naked and whatnot, just like Artemis. Athena was also born out of Zeus's skull. That's super sick. Yeah, one of the other gods uh, hit Zeus's head with an axe, and she came out. There's pictures of this, and it's... That's so funny. It's really cool. <laughs> I think it's great. That's absolutely hilarious. Yeah, I, I, Zeus managed to give birth to her, and I think there's one other god that like grew in his skin and came out. Ugh. I forget who it was. Um, well, like he also gave birth to Athena, uh, not Athena, Aphrodite. Um, Aphrodite, um, because he threw something into the, to the water, and then she came out all. That's a beautiful. That's one of the many stories yeah. of, um, Athena. My favorite one Athena. was the oh no we both Aphrodite. Did it. So one of my one of the things was my Greek mythology teacher had a lot of trouble saying this. So I think it's great. One of the stories that is that Aphrodite is made out of Kronos's severed genitals. <laughs> Zeus chopped off his dad's balls. They fell in the ocean, and out of the sea foam came Aphrodite. And, wow. <laughs> Some interesting choices. Quietly poetry. Nice. <laughs> I've already done that. <laughs> um, and you can go on with you. Yeah. Um, so I think this is one of both of ours. Um, Dionysus. I totally spelled it wrong. I do not know how to spell, guys. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not going to spell that for you. No, because... no, no. Can you please spell it out loud for us? How you spelled it? Yeah, how I spelled it. D-Y-N-O-N-Y-S-I-O-U-S. I I like it. (laughs) Anyways, um, I, so in my notes I wrote, isn't he the trans god? He is not. (laughs) He's just chaos, and I love him. Yeah. Um, he has super chill vibes. He's like the god of partying, pretty much. Yeah, partying, wine, um, festivities, like he's just... He's the cool god. He's cool. He's a little bit crazy. I I can get beh- I can get behind that. What's what's your favorite like myth with Dionysus? Because I don't really remember any with him. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of research into Dion- Dionysus or Dionysus, however you want to pronounce it, during my mythology course. So I, I just know that he had like, the satyrs and, whatever the women were called. <laughs> I nymphs. Just, no nymphs are. A little bit nicer. Oh, no, no. The women, nymphs, maenads, nymphs. maenads, 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 maenads. Those. So I know. I know. Nymphs are uh, sp- like nature spirits. Yes. They're not like spiders that are like half goat. They're like literal water or trees. Yeah, and na- um maenads are like essentially when you read about them, it's just they're super ugly women. <laughs> That's how That's they so describe. Sad. That's so mean. The s- and the satyrs are like super ugly men. That are half goat, and they mm-hmm. these are kind of like Dionysus's posse. Yeah, yeah, they're they're a little crazy, and I am going to mention the maenads a little bit later. Okay, uh, for one of my myths. Um, what what as I started to get older, and I started to not like Athena less, I started to learn more about Greek mythology. I became attached a little bit more to Artemis. Um, it's probably also in part because I played Artemis in a play 
we did like a knockoff museum thing at theater camp and i played a statue of artemis oh that's so sick yeah it was a lot of fun uh although i did have my hand straight out holding a bow and arrow arm behind my back and i had to stand like that for a good 10 minutes you're so buff <laughs> i don't know how i did it but i but like it was not fake when I brought my arms down because the night of the museum became nighttime and I became alive and I dropped my arms and I was just like, yes, finally. <laughs> it was not acting. Everyone's arms were sore. The girl that played Athena had her arms straight up in the air. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it was it was really crazy. but I, I enjoyed it very much. Um, so I started to like Artemis. She's goddess of hunting and girls. She's the sun too, right? Um, I think so, yes, because she is no, wait, Apollo's I know. Apollo, 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 Apollo's the sun. Apollo's the sun. Uh, Artemis is the moon? Yes. I, they are, they are twins. They're opposite, yeah. They're they, the opposites of each other. Yeah, she's also goddess of childbirth, too, I believe. Is when, she? I thought Hera, that was Hera. Because when she was born, she helped um, bring Apollo out. That's, that's such a funny... Yeah, it? it's yeah. Uh, Greek mythology is wild. I love Greek mythology. Yeah. Um, so I started to like her a little. And more. then who, who who else do you like? Because we have. Oh, now I have decided I like Apollo. I think he's my favorite. He's, he's favorite. got the music, art, the sun. Yeah, he's just yeah. He rides the sun chariot, and she rides the moon chariot. Yes, I really I think Apollo is cool. He's also not super violent except for the time when someone claims they play better music than him and he skins them and hangs them upside down from a tree other than that he's generally pretty nice isn't there the one dude who was like super better than him i forget his name yeah that's the one he killed did he kill him i think so like he played such good music that like it made the forest weep or whatever oh oh i'll get to him too he's well, tell me the names so orpheus forget. thank you he's greek jesus is he greek jesus yes his his story is very similar to Jesus. I I, I like that. I think Orpheus is cool. Okay. Awesome. So now now I like Apollo and Dionysus the best. Yeah. I've I've been a Hestia lover since I've known about Greek mythology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I thought Hestia was really pretty from like the images I'd seen of her. Yeah. I was like, "Oh, she's just pretty." I think my favorite thing like the thing about me having favorites of things is when I'm certain about a favorite, it stays the same forever. Like, my favorite color has been yellow since I've been five. <laughs> my favorite color has, um, oh boy, I don't have a favorite color. I've got three, purple, blue, and orange. I think orange is the favorite, but when I was younger, it was blue. And I've always liked blue, but Right orange, now, <laughs> uh, right now I have, like, my, my favorite color has steadily been yellow, but, like, every now and then another color seeps in, and I'm like, oh, I like this color, too. And right now that color is green. Mm. And it's only because my girlfriend gave me a nice little blanket, and it's, like, green and yellow. And it's yellow. green, and now you're like, well. <laughs> it's green and yellow, and it's it's made by her grandma, and I just love it a lot. Guess I like green now. <laughs> uh, and then next is our favorite. Characters. Characters. Okay. Um, you you can go. Story. Okay. Um, I'm just going to flip through my notes because this guy's story is a little bit wild i will have you know um so my favorite character in greek mythology is sisyphus 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 so he is um you've probably heard of him actually He's the one, I've told you about the story, but he's the one that everyone knows for pushing the boulder up the hill for eternity, and then every time it gets to the top, it comes crumbling back down. Yeah, every, everyone's heard that story before, but yeah. like, maybe not the context of the story, just that the guy's doing it forever as Yeah, punishment. so there are a lot of people who are like, he is like a symbol for the human race, that he has to do this forever. Sisyphus, um, the best word I can think to describe him is a shit disturber. But when I wrote an essay about him, I couldn't say that, so I called him an agitator. <laughs> I was going to say rabble rouser, but then I was like, mm. rabble rouser this is a good word. Ah, it's an essay, though. <laughs> okay, okay. What's another, what's it, real quick, I know we're going to get sidetracked, but what's another yeah. good word for shit disturber? Provocator. Like? Provocator, agitator, rabble um, rouser. Hustle and hooligan. Hooligan? Yes, he is also a hooligan. <laughs> so he's crafty and he's cunning. Um, so it originally started as Sisyphus told Aspos, 
or Aesopus, or he's one of the river gods, that Zeus had abducted his daughter, which is true because Zeus does this all the time. This is just classic Zeus. <laughs> Zeus. <laughs> and so Sisyphus tells the river god this, and of course Zeus is not happy. Yeah. So Zeus sends the god of death, Thanatos, my uh, Marvel fans out there will probably recognize that, um, he sends Thanatos after Sisyphus, and Sisyphus kidnaps Thanatos instead of dying. <laughs> and so every human on Earth is briefly immortal because the god of death can't do anything because he's kidnapped. Real quick, guys, don't get confused. The god of the underworld is Hades. The yes. god of death is Thanos. Thanatos. Thanatos. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Mr. And Thanos just does his own thing. Yeah. And so Ares, the god of war, had to get involved. And so he released Thanatos and gave Sisyphus to Thanatos. So Sisyphus died. But before Sisyphus died, he told his wife, do not give me a funeral. And <laughs> so when he goes down to Hades, Hades is like, hey, man, I don't know what to do with your body. You did not have a funeral. There were no funeral rites. And Sisyphus being the crafty man that he is, says, oh, just send me back up. I'm going to tell my wife to give me a funeral. And so Hades is like, yeah, sure, man, go back up there. When Once Sisyphus is up there, um, there are like st stories where he compares himself to that of a god because he tells his servant to wash his feet. And he's like, these are the feet that are a god or something like that. And of course, uh, Hades is like, hey, man, can you come back down now that you've talked to your wife? And Sisyphus is like, no, <laughs> I'm not coming back down. So eventually Hermes drags Sisyphus back down to the underworld. And that is when his eternal punishment of rolling the boulder up the hill begins. He cheats death a few times. I think I'm in love with him. Yeah, I know. He's fantastic. I did my final project and wrote an entire essay on this guy. And there's only that one story of him. It was, <laughs> it was a really good essay. Um, I think, um, but I do not believe that as many said that he was a tragic hero. I don't consider no one, no him one a tragic No one thinks he's a tragic hero. Everyone thinks he's a shithead. For me, yes. But there were books that were calling him um, a man who had maddening passion and stuff and who had maddening passion yeah they they really they really liked him there's also um it's just it's just crazy um my one of my favorite characters is achilles yeah i don't really know much about him but like the idea that like his mom was like okay just by your little ankle here you go <laughs> into the river sticks you go <laughs> and like dipped him in kind of let him marinate then pulled him out and went you look healthy enough why didn't she, like, put the rest, like, the end Yeah, of the why didn't she turn around and put it... Oh, I guess she can't, because then we wouldn't have the story oh, that every yeah. man has a weakness. I guess so. The Achilles heel. Achilles heel. What's your Achilles heel? Uh, my actual heel. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I don't know. There's a lot. <laughs> I trust Tweety. I already know that. Um... Mine might be somewhere along those lines. I believe the good in everybody. Yes, absolutely everyone. Yeah, everyone's great. Yeah. I will like, sympathize yeah. with every single and if, like, person. One person was like bad to me. I'm like that's that's a that's a outlier. That person does not count with everyone else. Yeah. Um I do generally sometimes have that feeling where all humans are inherently evil and trying to be good, but that's usually when I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay, so talking about that real quick. All humans are inherently neutral, mm -hmm. but, oh, excuse me, um, all humans actively attempt to be good. Yes. Because there's just always good in the world, no matter what. Um, Mr. Rogers once said, his mom always said to look at the team, like, to look for helpers. Yes, look and for the people who that's, are helping. That's one of the most brilliant things I've ever heard when you see a tragedy. Yeah. It's true. They are everywhere. Um, anyways, uh, Achilles goes around and like fucks shit up for a bit, and then someone's like, "Hey, I heard, I heard his heels is weakness," and then Apollo. he dies. And I think that's pretty rad of him. Apollo does that. Oh, it's Apollo who. Um, goes Hector him. shoots the arrow. Hector's on the Trojan side of the Trojan War. Achilles is on the people fighting Troy, and 
Apollo guides the arrow. <gasps> yeah. Apollo? My rat. I, I have a rat named Apollo, and I have a rat named Hermes, so sometimes when I hear and speak about the names of the gods, I just think of my pets. And I'm like, <laughs> Apollo would never do that. Okay, you but have another totally one, don't you? Would. Yes. Um, uh, this is for characters. Uh, Tantalus and Odysseus. So Tantalus, very short story. He goes up to the gods. He's another shit disturber like Sisyphus and has an eternal punishment. She has a type. It's bastards. <laughs> I don't have a type. <laughs> no, um, I think I just like them because I see myself in them. I'm a bastard. I'm kidding. So I'm right. I w- you have a type. I'm, it's I'm, bastards. I'm very much like Sisyphus in the way that I'm a jerk. And I, <laughs> I don't want to die right now. No. Um, I'm not like Tantalus in what he does. But just... The idea of being, doing whatever the heck I want. Right, what, what's Tantalus do? So Tantalus, Tantalus. stole. <gasps> like tantalizing. Yes, that's where the word comes from. He stole from the gods, like their secrets. Um, I believe he stole amber as well. Like, and he was sharing them with the people. And of course, the people, <gasps> the gods are like, "Excuse me." Is he? Is he the one that shared fire with the with people, or is that a different guy? No, that's a different guy. I think that's. I know Hephaestus? he's the one. Is he the one that has to hold the sky up forever now? No, that is Atlas. There's so many people. <laughs> there are so many. Um, Tantalus has to make a dinner for the gods because, well, he's a bit of a jerk. So he decides to kill his son and serve his son to the gods. Why? I don't know why he decided to do that. Um, and all of the gods except. Um, Demeter because she's very upset at this time because Persephone is not with her she ends up eating the child (gasps) but none of the other gods do and the other gods realize hey wait a minute this is your son so was he being like I bet you're enjoying the son of mine (laughs) probably something like that Um, the gods find out they kill Tantalus and revive his son because his son did not deserve that. Yeah. And Tantalus, his eternal punishment is he stands in a river with a tree above his head. He is constantly hungry and constantly thirsty. Every time he reaches for the river, it moves lower. It runs dry, so he can't grab it. And every time he reaches for the food, it moves just out of reach. And he's... Con- I get yeah. tantalizing now. Yeah, that's where it comes from. Like, I understand that word so much better now. Yeah, it's it's an interesting concept now that and Odysseus, um, he's he's the guy that finds out about the tr- like he's the one that discovers the idea of the Trojan horse. It's okay. him that puts that in action, with the help of Athena. Him and Athena are close. They're like besties. Do yeah. You, do pinky swings after and the secret handshake. Yeah. After the Trojan War, um, there's a he goes through a lot of things with his crew. And his crew eats some sacred cattle that they were not supposed to eat. And so, very bad luck for them the rest of the way home. It takes Odysseus 10 years to get home from the Trojan War, which he was gone for 10 years anyway. Aww. On his way back, he also gets kidnapped for eight years. But he's he's a bit of a trickster. I like tricksters, <laughs> clearly. Tricksters um, and bastards. Yeah. And he goes to a cyclops. And... The Cyclops kidnaps them because he wants to eat them. And he does eat a few. And he dis- <laughs> and so he asks um, for Odysseus' name. And Odysseus says his name is No One. And eventually Odysseus attacks this Cyclops because they want to get out because they don't want to get eaten anymore. And he stabs the Cyclops in the eye, making him blind. And the Cyclops is, like, screaming out in pain. And other Cyclopses come by. And they're like, are you okay? And he goes, no one is trying to kill me. And so they leave. (laughs) And I really liked that. That's really funny. Yeah. Um, They eventually, because the Cyclops is blind, they hide underneath the Cyclops' sheep to get out. Because he was stealing the toxin to make sure that no one was leaving. So they hid underneath. Um, that's that's where all of the like action movies where people hide under trucks come from. Yeah, Odysseus um, makes one tragic mistake though. He tells the Cyclops as he's leaving that his real name is Odysseus. Um, Poseidon then 
destroys Odysseus's ship, killing everyone except Odysseus, who manages to live, and that's when he gets kidnapped for eight years by the fairy, by the nymph, sorry. And then eventually, after like 10 years, he goes home, and his wife has like a ton of suitors after it, after her and they're all living in the castle and she's like I don't want to move on <laughs> <laughs> and um, eventually like he goes in there under disguise and is the best at everything there's like trials that they have to go through kind of like Merida and Brave Yeah. Um, and he's the best at them and eventually he tells his wife hey I'm Odysseus and she hasn't seen him in 20 years so like it's kind of weird also something that's cute Odysseus's dog is the first one to recognize him. Yes, the dog. That means the dog is over twenty years old, but his dog was the first to recognize him. That's very cute. Yeah. <laughs> and he eventually tells his wife, and his wife's like, "I don't believe you." And then she says um, something about, "If I bring the bed here, something, then I forget." And he goes, "But you can't move the bed." And she's like, it really is you, because he carved the bed out of, like, a tree or something, and it couldn't move. And so that's how she found out it was him. And then they all lived happily ever after, kind of, sort of. That's that's <laughs> a first for Greek myths. Like, yeah, they it, normally end with sadness. It's because Odysseus is a good man. I, I, Some versions of it do end in sadness, but that's just... I like that version. Yeah, I Fuck like that version. Fuck all the other version. versions. Yeah, forget the others. That's the best one. Um, okay. Your story. And my, like, other favorite is Midas. Because he's just an absolute fucker. <laughs> Give me gold. <laughs> Give me gold he's touch. Like, I would like gold, please. And I'd like to make everything I touch gold. And, like, that's a very... That's, that's, that's bold. That's, that's, a, that's a move. Mm-hmm. That's a power move, I think. Yeah, I, I think that's cool. And then he doesn't like it. And he's like, please take it back. And Dionysus is like, sure, man. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure, dude. I don't care. Yeah, it's not like... I, I remember when I read that, I was shocked because I'd heard it that he eventually, like, touched a human being and killed them, and he got really upset about it. Yeah. But, no, the real story, he's just like, hey, take it back, and Dionysus is like, fine. Well, not the real story, that version of the story. Yeah, that there's, version. There's, there's a mythology. bunch of there's different, so many. there's so many different stories because of how myths were passed around and all of that, mm-hmm. like... If someone heard a story, they might change a detail or something. Mm-hmm. And that one's passed down to this group of people, and this other group of people heard this story. And so there's a lot of different versions of the story. Yeah. One of Midas's fates is um, Apollo and uh, Pan, the goat god, yes. have a oh, they have a music contest and tell Midas to be the judge. Midas picks Pan, and uh, Apollo goes... You're an idiot, (laughs) and turns his ears into donkey ears, and is basically calling him an ass, and that he can't hear things properly. So he, so um, one of the only person Midas has long hair and keeps Mm -hmm. it a secret. Midas is the guy who does his hair finds out, and doesn't want to tell anybody. So he whispers it into the like he digs a hole and whispers it into the ground. Lo and behold, a tree grows out of the ground, and like it whispers. (laughs) <laughs> and so <laughs> Midas killed himself Aww. because of that secret and I'm kind of like dude what there's you did so many things that like dude sometimes it happens King Midas you're an interesting fellow and then last we're doing our favorite stories yes um do you want me to go first oh, time? I think there's. Oh yeah, story. They were doing stories in the group. Y- yes. Um. Oh, cause. Uh, you can go first for this one. Okay. So, this one. This one's gonna get Dana a little freaked out. Oh no! I think I know where we're going with this. It's one of my favorite <laughs> stories because I love thinking about it. If you change a ship, like every piece of a ship, with something new, is that st- still the same ship? Fuck your story. I fucking love story. <laughs> it's um, the answer is yes, it's the same shit, but don't worry about that right now. Um, I the mean. ship of Theseus is to like the ship, and they're going on a voyage, and I forget how long the voyage lasts, but it's a pretty long time. Do you have a, Do you have it on there? Um, I do not have it, but the ship of Theseus, I believe, is the one with the Minotaur, and. He's supposed to put up a sign, like a white, f- 
display a white sail or a black sail and he doesn't do it oh, to yeah, let his dad like, know kill- that he's alive. Yeah, yeah, and then his dad kills himself. There's a lot of that in Greek mythology. Oh, yeah. so I don't actually have the notes from the story I wanted to talk about, but honestly, I think I'm fine. Um, so the first story that like I want to talk about is Orpheus, who we talked about a little bit before. Um, basically, Greek Jesus. I think he's super cool. Oh, wait. Here we go. I think that's... Ah, yes. I have a little bit. Ah, no, never mind. I'm wrong. I'll give it two more seconds for me to find it. Okay, while she's doing that, I'll continue to ramble about never the Never mind, I guess. I, I'm just going to go with it. One second. Let me go with Super okay. Jesus real All quick. Right. Okay, so the reason why it is is because, like, if someone had, like, their arm chopped off and they had a prosthetic, that's still the same person. <laughs> if you put a human brain inside of a robot, that's still the same person. Therefore, the ship is the same. Maybe. Not it maybe. It could go yes. that way. But if you replace absolutely everything, nothing from before is still there. But it's still the same person. Kind of. It's the same person in theory. But yeah. in actuality, it's not. Agree to disagree. I hate this story. <laughs> okay, um, so I don't have my notes on Orpheus, so I'm just going to wing it. Okay. Um, Orpheus is Greek Jesus. He has such beautiful music <gasps> oh, oh, oh. that the rocks and the trees all move for him. This what do is, you know about this him? Is, this is what Hades Town is about. Uh, what? The musical Hades Town. Oh, it's probably about Orpheus. I don't doubt Orpheus that. Orpheus and uh, his girlfriend. Yes, um, she dies, she dies, and she goes down to Hades, which is the, not just the name of the god, but also the underworld is called Hades, to make things complicated. And he goes down there to convince them, bring my wife back. And they're like, no. So he starts playing music, and he's so good, and he doesn't quit. And eventually, they agree to let his wife it's, come back. It's the equivalent of singing the song that never ends until <laughs> someone actually does something for you. What a legend. But, of course, Orpheus is not allowed to be happy. And so he client, he has to go back up to the un- over upper world. The not Hades place. Not Hades. He has to climb there, and he cannot look back at his wife. So he's like, okay, sounds good. I trust her. Yeah, so he walks all the way back up. When he gets to the entrance of Hades, the sun blinds him, and he turns around. And looks at his wife. In the story that I heard, he turns around because he gets nervous. There's different versions. And he turns, and the the wife turns to salt. Oh, um, in the version that I heard, she just disappears into nothingness. As in her soul just goes back down to Hades and he sees her after. Yeah, we heard different versions. Yeah, there's there's so many different versions. There's no right or wrong answer with these. It's quite interesting that way. There's, um, and then after that, he... He goes gay. Yeah. Like, um, fledged. <laughs> yeah. Homosexuality in Greek um, culture is interesting to say the least. It was only acceptable if there was an imbalance of sorts. That's not healthy or Yeah, good. no, it's not. Um, there was, it was typically common for an adult and a child. <laughs> That's gross. Yeah, it's it's Ew. gross. It's terrible. And it was just a normal part of life. Yeah. And so, yeah, Orpheus decides that he only likes men at this point. Because why the heck not, honestly. And so the Maenades, Di- uh, Dionysus' posse, the women, they're not happy about this. Yeah, so, they, lo- they just lost their fuck boy. Yeah, and so they tear Orpheus limb from limb. They tear him apart. And Orpheus, um, oh, I forgot to mention, he becomes, not only does he go gay, he becomes a vegetarian and he does not participate in anything violent. So he kind of starts almost a religion, like Jesus, of people that do not participate in violence, are vegetarian, and just sort of live a very peaceful musical life kind of thing. May needs to tear him apart. He doesn't fight back. 
and that's why he dies that well. His head rolls down the cliff, falls in a river, floats away. It's still singing, and then it lands on the beach. I forget where, and he, he's still talking, and he's talking in prophecies, and so a shrine is dedicated to him, and it's where people go to participate in that way of life. Huh. So he's kind of like Jesus. He's, he's a prophet, yeah, to say the least. Prophet, yeah, like Jesus. No, Jesus... If we're talking about Christianity real quick, <laughs> Jesus is the pro like is the prophet Isaiah, but he's not technically a prophet like John, Luke, Mark, or what's his face. I don't understand Christian religion. <laughs> it's okay. I grew up a, yeah. in a Catholic church, so. Anyways. Yeah. So he's. When I say Greek Jesus, I mean like the concept. Yeah. Of... The, the the died for three days, came back. Sort of like he's he starts his own peaceful religion and he okay. gets a following like that oh okay yeah he like he has a following of people and uh, when so he dies is they he start like the is he anything like the seer of d that die daphne daphne um kind of okay um daphne has daphne her own is story apollo apollo's isn't apollo's she? kind of um she turns herself into, like, a plant to avoid him. Oh. Yeah. Apollo sometimes is not nice, but every god has their nice sides and their mean sides. You know sides. what one of my favorite stories is? Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Um, uh, Ares, not Ares, um, Eros, the Eros? goddess, uh, like, the Cupid, goddess yes. of lo- god of love. Yeah. Um, he met his wife, and he oh, was like, yes. I'm in love with her, but he can't have her see her, him because yes. she is a human. Mm-hmm. And sh- he can't have Aphrodite know because Aphrodite is like you're my little bitch. Um, yeah. He's also so, her. He's also um, her son. Yeah, don't worry about that. Incest is part of Greek mythology. As yes. Well. Anyways, um, so Eros brings her to a little like island where she's allowed to have the lights on when he's not home, but she has to she has to have them off when he's there because if she sees him, she'll either die. Or, like depending on the story you read, she'll die or. Or fall, in, or fall in love with him is another yeah, one but, as yeah, well. Yeah, um, but she's already in love with him. That's a big thing. She's in love with him, but if she sees him, like, it'll... Yeah. Yeah, but... Anyways. So many um, I forget how she, how it happens, but she ends up seeing him. Either she was got curious and saw him, or she... Um, in one version, she gets, like, her friend or sister to yeah, her sis- turn on the lamp. Yeah, oh, and um, another version, her friend or sister turns on the lamp for her, and she's like, I don't want this. Yeah. I don't want to see him. Like, I would like to stay in this happy life that I have with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one version has her go to a different a- island than him, and she's like, I just want to be back with him. Mm-hmm. And then eventually they get back together, and yeah. he's very cute and happy. And then another one, she dies. Yeah, it really depends on the story. Um, I don't see any other stories. Oh, Heracles or Hercules. I'm just going to be very brief with him. Um, most, Hercules. most people know his story, um, from the movie Hercules by Disney, which, um, is a little different from the myth. Hercules, um, he's very violent and aggressive and angry. Um, he's not very smart. The first thing the that first he, himbo. Yeah, he kills two snakes to save his brother as an infant in his crib that were sent by Hera to kill him because Hera does not like him. Oh yeah, because because unlike the Disney movie, he's bait and a wedlock. He's a he's a half god. Yes, um, all, like most of Zeus's children are. <laughs> we're gonna get to Zeus later. Zeus, fuck him, fuck him, but also he's so cool. <laughs> he's so he's so interesting. So much. Yes. Continue. So. Hera is like, still, if I can't kill him, I'm going to ruin his life. So she kind of waits till Heracles. I'm going to call him Heracles just for the sake of that because that's his Greek name. Um, but he is Hercules. They are the same person. He marries Megara. Just oh, so yeah. He- He's named Heracles because uh, the mom, wa- mom wanted to please Hera. Yes. And they're like, okay, okay. We'll make the, the name a boy name. And Hera was like, oh my god, you guys are fucking idiots. I <laughs> still hate him. Um, so anyway, he marries Megara. He has two children, or three, or something Is like that. Is he end up killing them? Yep. Hera curses him with madness. 
and he kills his entire family Which in a fit of rage. Sad about it. When he's a child, he also kills his music teacher because he sucks at music. Heracles cannot play music, and he beat his musical teacher with a chair until he died. That's so sad. Yeah, so he's all brawn, no brain. Um, the first himbo, like I said before. <laughs> he starts to feel really, really bad for this, like his insanity, and... He goes to um, a king that he is serving under, who Hera is telling him what to do. And he's like, Hera, please, here are the ten labors. I thought there was twelve labors. It was ten, but two of them didn't count. Um, uh... Because he's like, you got help from someone else. So the first one is the Nemean lion, which this lion, he wrestles and kills. And he, he wears his skin because his skin is indestructible. So he wears that for the rest of his adventures. So on a lot of pottery and stuff, he is depicted in that lion outfit. So that's how you know who he is. Um, he then does the Hydra, which is the multiple-headed snake. Um, he's Also, Hera believed that he would not come back from all of these labors. So yeah, Hera's like, die, die, bitch, die. He's going to die. die, die, die. And he didn't because he's so strong. Um the Hydra did not count because he got someone's help because he would cut off their heads and the other person would uh, light them on fire so that they, they couldn't grow back. back. Cauterize. Yeah, cauterize. Um, and then there's the Hind of Sinera, which is, I think, a fur. I forget that one. And there's, like, the boar that he has to kill. And then there's the stables. So he goes to the stables and he has to clean them. And he redirects a river to go through to clean the stables. But because he didn't do the labor, the water did, that one doesn't count. Okay. Yeah. Um, then there's the birds one, the Cretian bull. Which one's the Cretian bull again? Um, I think he has to kill that one too. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's like an actual bull, not like yeah. a ceramic bull? No, it's okay. a, I think it's an actual bull. Who knows though? I forget. There's the horse of Diom Diomedes, I believe. Um, they're man-eating horses. <gasps> He bring he kidnaps them, brings them that back, the and then scary as shit. Yeah, I yeah. actually have a fear of horses. I love horses. I used to be a barn manager. Kind of thing. Are you a horse girl? No. Ew. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do not associate me with the horse girls ever again. <laughs> I'll get into that on another episode, maybe. My horse girls. Anyway, uh, then he has to steal the belt of Hippolyta. Yes. Yes. Um. One of, the there's one about one. cattle as well. That's ten, but he still had two more. The one with the apples is actually fairly interesting. Is that the golden apple one, or is that a different guy? They are. I believe they are golden apples. And he goes to steal them. Um, but this is the only one where he doesn't use brute force. No, he doesn't. Yeah. Um, one of them, he... This is my favorite Heracles story. He gets really mad because it's too hot outside and shoots an arrow at the sun. And so the sun god, I forget his name. It's not Apollo, but there's a god who's just the oh, sun. Oh, yeah, yeah. He comes down and is like, did you just shoot an arrow at the sun? And he gives him his chariot because of how bold he was. He was like, that was really gutty. Like, take that, man. And so he gives him his chariot to help him get through the desert. Anyway. <laughs> the apples, he, this is the only one he doesn't use brute force. He finds a way, I forget how he learns of this. But he convinces Atlas to do it. So Hercules, Heracles holds up the sky. Holy shit. Well, Atlas steals the apples and comes back. And then um, Atlas is like, I don't want to hold the sky anymore. And Heracles is like, okay, that's fine. I'll hold the sky forever. But I just need to get comfortable. Can you hold it for a second? Atlas does so, and Heracles leaves. <laughs> so that's the only one where he uses his brain instead of brawn. And then the final one is kidnapping Cerebus, the three-headed dog. And after that, Hera and the king decide, okay, fine. <laughs> You've lived. We get it. And eventually he receives a demigod status. He is, I believe he is the only hero to get that status. Really? And become a god. Yeah, so Heracles is very impressive. Yeah, he is. Um, my other another favorite story of mine is Icarus. Yes, I love Icarus. Um, so what happens? You probably know what happens with Icarus, but um, his dad and him get put in jail, 
And they're like, okay, let's make an escape plan. The dad's like super, super crafty. And he goes, I'm going to make us some wings, which humans aren't supposed to fly, by the way. We know this. Um, So he makes some wings out of some wax and paper. And they fly, and they're flying over the sky. And one of the gods look down and go, they're a little too cocky. They're flying too close to me. And then the the wax starts to melt, the paper starts catching on fire, and then the sun, Icarus, goes flies a little higher, and the dad's like, "No, Icarus, don't do it." Um, Spoiler alert: Icarus does it. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and then Icarus, uh, the wings melt, burn up, and he plummets to the ocean and dies. And then the 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 dad goes on to make the labyrinth um, the- with the Minotaur in it. I'm not sure if that comes before or after, but I know that he does it. At he some does point. that at some point. I don't remember his name. I'm very and sorry. the Minotaur actually leads us into our next segment about Zeus Mother and his fucker. idea of fun. He is Fucking a motherfucker. Zeus. He fucks every mother. <laughs> <laughs> he makes mothers. <laughs> yeah, and he fucks people. He he goes in the disguise as their husbands. That's one of his many disguises. Uh, he goes as cows. And- Yes, um, that's actually kind of to do with the Minotaur. Um, oh, yeah, because yeah, he, he gets the wife to fuck the cow. Yeah, and so the Minotaur is born. He also does go in disguise as a cow, and I don't know why the person was like, damn, I'm going to fuck that cow, but it happens, I guess. Um, maybe it's like that John Mulaney bit. Maybe. I don't know that bit. So. <gasps> I have to show you after. Okay. All right. <laughs> There's, um, <laughs> I, okay, so this is really weird. Um, but his idea of, like, fun, he also transforms himself into what is described as a golden shower. But not the golden shower you're thinking of. Sorry, I had a moment of panic there. My <laughs> stomach literally dropped. Um, so it's uh, actually gold dust. And that makes um, the woman, Danae, pregnant. Okay. I forget what her son. I think is the one. Pericles, Pericles, not Pericles, something like that. The one who ends up killing Medusa. <gasps> yes. Poor Medusa. Poor Medusa, but also Medusa. Stop. <laughs> okay, so like it's not totally Medusa's fault. Not totally. Like, no. They they did rape her. They did put her through a lot of shit, and all she did was exist. As someone who is not beautiful. Yes. People kept doing things she did not want to her. And Athena put the snakes and did everything to her to protect her. Yeah. I would actually love s- hair snakes. That'd be pretty fucking sick. Snakes are cool. But then I'd have to feed them and I'd feel really bad. Well, I guess if they're my hair, they're probably not. You don't have to feed them. Yeah, anymore. they're probably not I know, needed. I know They'll s- get nourishment from what I eat. I know there's some, like, people who have Gorgon, like, original characters who have their snakes eat separately from them. I think that's weird. They're on your head. They're on your head. They're attached to you. They're part of you. They're getting nutrients from what you eat. You just have to eat a little more. They can eat with their mouths if they want, and it'll still go to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I think think they can eat whatever they want. Mm, Yeah. Unless you have a snake diet. No. I do not have a snake diet. I'll have you know. (laughs) I don't eat rats and mice. (laughs) Um, so, one that I wanted to get into is, there's a story about Ganymede. I want you to guess what Ganymede's going to be about while I have a drink. I'm, I'm looking at how it's spelled. Give me a second. <clears throat> Ganymede. It sounds like a familiar word. Ganymede's a boy. No, oh, like, it reminds me of a word. I don't know what word it is, but Ganymede is abducted from the battlefield by Zeus as an eagle, and he steals him. And Ganymede becomes Zeus's cupbearer, but also his male and possibly child lover. So Zeus, he's not just having fun with the ladies, he's moving into the boys too. So <coughs> Zeus doesn't discriminate, he's just horny. <laughs> yeah, um, so I have written down here, um, why is he so horny? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, I, and then I wrote a frowny face. I don't know what. So that. it's actually to do with fertility. Fertility is power. Oh, so he and so he kids. is powerful because every single time that he has sex, there's baby. Uh, there's also things with 
the gods where like their semen touches the earth and something grows because every time the gods are involved there's a baby because there's so fertility is power fertility the wise they're so horny yeah so that's why he has the most children and he's so horny because it's power for him i see yeah i get that now still calm down like literally everyone on earth there's like if you look at family trees zeus will appear with at the top and then he'll appear like halfway through again like he zeus you're related to everyone at this point yeah um, and his full and true form is hera doesn't like his lovers obviously yeah. and so she really doesn't like one of them and says hey you should ask to see zeus in his full form so she does and she gets killed by a thunderbolt yeah, because he's just he's just a ball he's of just, lightning. Yeah, incredible. That's a that's an interesting way to God, die, though. That incredible just reminded me of uh, Nico's fucking oh, yes, yes. That was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good video. Anyway, sorry, I got distracted. So there. that is our segment. Wait, on... I have a smi- frowny oh, face. Oh, the frowny face. What's the frowny face though? Uh, it's for this little little side pick. Oh, so. The gods, we should take them as ideas um, rather than at face value, like we talked about at the mm-hmm. beginning. Um, so they can still be extremely shitty, but also they're really nice at the same time. They're yeah, just they're the balance of making them charismatic and likable while also being like, hey, these are bad people. They, they walk a very fine line of doing that with, yeah. like, only a few of them being actually okay people. Yeah, Apollo creates an oracle at Delphi, I believe. Delphi? Delphi, I think, Delphi, Delphi, I think it is. And he kills the um, python, python that was there. So he helps the city, but then there's times where he turns a bunch of pirates into dolphins or where he skins a guy and hangs him upside down. Um because he thought he was better at music and turns Midas's ears into donkey ears. Like, he's good, but also, wow, those are some really bad things. Mm-hmm. They're also not to be taken as, they're, they're, they are ideas. They're not to be taken as, hey, I'm going to live just like that. Because if you live just like that, you're not a god. You're not going to fare so well. No. Because when peop- there is a story of a man, I forget his name, and he pretends he's Zeus by like throwing lanterns and rattling things behind his chariot. Zeus just strikes him down with lightning because that's a no. (laughs) No, you don't do that. Um, I have a very bad joke for you. Okay. Hold on, give me a second. I forgot what it was. You forgot your own joke. I did. It's not here. No, it's It's not here. What game do the Greek gods play? I don't know. Hydra, Hydra and Grissy. Hydra. <laughs> Fine. Are you are you uh, Hades? Because well, you're boring me to death. <laughs> 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 you should have used the those. But Hades, it's his realm. It's I guess his so. home. I guess Thanatos kills as well. Um. So that's kind of that's our. Greek segment and that little area was our bad joke um if you guys have any requests for if you want advice from us it probably won't be the greatest but we can try our very best maybe so if you have any questions ideas want advice feel free to contact us at the email uh, interest of the week dot gmail uh, at gmail dot com. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> and week is spelled W E A K because yes. we are weak and we are not doing this every week. <laughs> yes, that would be that'd be a lot with our schedules. Yeah, that'd be insane. Um, I believe that is all. That's all. Unless you have anything else you want to say. No, I'm good. And now we're going to let this ride out for a few seconds. This is just going to be some buffer noise, um, just so we can cut it off at the end. We should remind them who we are. Oh yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna go silent for like five seconds right now, and then you're gonna edit this out because you're gonna edit this. And so I'm Dana. I'm Sunny. And there and uh, we're signing off now. Hopefully, not be- for the last time. Yeah. yeah. See ya.
just waved at the mic. <laughs> <laughs> okay.